this video is going to cover the topic of exponents. Be sure the date is at the top of the paper, and we'll have the topic of this video be exponents. The essential question for today is how do we show the number of times a factor is used to produce a number? Make sure you have that written at the top. To start this video, let's start by reviewing prime factorizations. Let's review it by using the number 60. I want to know the prime factors that build to create the number 60. So to start, I'd need one factor pair. You can start with any factor pair that you can think of. Um, I'm going to start with 2 times 30 because I know 2 and 30 multiply to make 60. So I'm going to put those in my factor tree. Because 2 is prime, I'm going to circle it. That's the end of that branch. 30 is not prime, so I'll keep going. I know that 15 times 2 makes 30, so let's break this branch into 15 times 2. Once again, 2 is prime, so I'll circle it. That's the end of that branch. Now I need to figure out a factor pair that makes 15. I know that 3 times 5 makes 15. And actually, those are both prime, so I'll circle both of those. And now all my tree branches end with prime numbers. I want to write out my prime factorization of 60. So 60 could be written as the product of the prime numbers 2 times 3 times 5 times 2. You might have those in a slightly different order if you started in a different way, but you should have two twos, a three, and a five. We can use exponents to show this answer as well, and most of the time, mathematicians do use exponents because it's more efficient. It's a cleaner way to record your answer. First, let's define exponent. An exponent is the small raised number that tells us how many times a factor is used. Knowing that, I'm going to rewrite my answer from our practice review question um, above. And instead of saying that 60 is 2 times 3 times 5 times 2, I see that the 2 is used twice. So I can rewrite that as an exponent 2 to the second power, which will tell me that there are two 2's. It looks like this. 60 is the prime factorization of 2 to the second power, because there are two factors of 2, times the 3 times the 5. And that's how we record the prime factorization of 60 using exponents. Let's turn, well, I'll turn my page. If you have more room, stay where you are. But I'm going to turn my page, and let's try the prime factorization of 81. So take a moment and think of some factors that can multiply to build the number 81. You might decide to choose different numbers than I do, but at the end we should have the exact same numbers in our prime factorization. How'd you do? I have the prime factorization of 81 as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now what would that look like if we used exponents? Make a guess and try it. Write it down. See what you think. How'd you do? Did you write that the 3 is being used 4 times? So the 3, we call this, this has a word, we call this the base. The 3 is being used 4 times. We call the 4 the power, so to the power of 4. Right. So we say 3 to the 4th power right. is 81. Let's do one more of these before we try something else. Go ahead and do the prime factorization of 54, and then write it more efficiently using exponents. Remember as you do this that you might choose two different numbers to start with that I, than I do because there are multiple factor pairs to make 54, but in the end, we should come to the same answer.
how'd you do? I found that 54 was the product of 2 times 3 times 3 times 3, but since there were three threes, the number 3 was getting used three times, I simplified that to be 2 times 3 to the power of 3. Hopefully you got the same thing I did. We have one last thing we're going to look at in this video, and that is how to use exponents to go the other direction. If we know the exponents, can we figure out what number the factors belong to? Here's an example. 4 to the third power, or 4 to the power of 3. Here's a common mistake. Some people see this uh, 4 to the third power as 12. Do you know where that mistake comes from? Most people, if they don't know better, might say that 4 times 3 is 12, so 4 to the third power is 12. But we know better, right? The 3 doesn't tell us to multiply 4 times 3. It tells us how many times the 4 is being used. So really, 4 to the third power means 4 times 4 times 4. I'll multiply these in pieces to make it a little easier. I know that 4 times 4 is 16, and then I need to multiply that by my third 4, my last 4. 4 to the third power is 64, not 12. Very different answer. What about 5 times 2 to the third? If I have 5 times 2 to the third power, what number, or for what number, is that the prime factorization? Take a moment and think it over, pause the video, and then we'll see how you did. If you said 30, you made a common mistake, right? Because 5 times 2 times 3 would be 30. But we know this here does not mean times 3. This is 5 times 2, and that 2 is being used and is showing up three times. So it's really 5 times 2 times 2 times 2. Well, 5 times 2 is 10 times another 2 is 20, times the last 2 is 40. So this was the number 40, right? The prime factorization of 40 is 5 times 2 to the third. We were able to go backwards to see that our mystery number was 40. Let's do one more, and that's the end here. So I'm going to turn the page, and I'm going to ask you to solve one more problem. Working backwards, let's find out for what number is 7 times 3 to the third power, the prime factorization? Pause the video, see what you come up with. How'd you do? My answer was 189. 7 times 3 to the third power, I found, was 189. In this video, we had a chance to work with exponents. We answered the essential question, right, which was how do we show the number of times a factor is used in a project, in a product, excuse me. The answer, of course, is with exponents. As always, make sure you record any questions you might have right, before we have a chance to practice this. We will be practicing this together in class.